These mountains are home to religious traditions and spiritual practices thousands of years old. It was here in the Himalaya, many believe, where meditation reached its highest and most advanced forms of practice. Long considered a mode of prayer, meditation has only recently been studied as a physiological process in its own right. In February 1981, Dr. Herbert Benson, a cardiologist and faculty member at Harvard Medical School, made his first expedition to northern India, accompanied by a research team. With the approval of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the team's objective was to study a secret Tibetan ritual meditation called Tumo. According to the legends, adepts could not only raise their body temperatures during meditation, they could also dry cold, wet sheets wrapped around their naked bodies. Over the next decade, Dr. Benson's team traveled to Dharamsala, Ladakh, Manali, and Sikkim, trying to unravel the physiological mysteries of Tumo meditation. Since no one knew quite what to expect, at least at the outset, the experiments were designed to be as portable and yet as complete as possible. In order to determine heat output, the team devised a system of lightweight thermistors which were applied to different positions on the body. A simple switching mechanism permitted the selection and separate measurement of all inputs utilizing a single meter. In the context of watching these experiments, and in order to fully understand the remarkable features of TUMO, one should keep in mind some of the basic laws of physiology. Within certain parameters, the human body is very good at regulating its own temperature. However, when the surrounding temperature falls below a certain critical point, the human body reacts by lowering blood flow to its extremities in order to conserve heat for the body's essential core functions. Taken to the extreme, the body is prepared to sacrifice fingers and toes to frostbite if that's what it takes to stay alive. These two Mo monks seem to function according to a different set of rules. In a cool to cold environment, and in a state of relaxation where skin temperatures would normally be going down, just the opposite is happening. The team observed increases in fingers and toes of 16 to 17 degrees Fahrenheit. On expedition to Sikkim, Dr. Benson and his team expanded their research to include measurements of brain waves and oxygen consumption in non-tumo meditation. In a startling development, the brain wave tracings indicated that instead of being in a slow, calm alpha state, which had been observed in meditators in the West, this monk showed marked asymmetry in alpha and beta wave activity between hemispheres. That's to say, one part of his brain was in calm meditation, while the other hemisphere showed a more active beta state, a state of high mental stimulation. What's more, measurements of his oxygen consumption were cause for concern. After ruling out air leaks in the system or defective equipment, attention turned to the monk himself. It soon became apparent that this monk was breathing at an extremely low rate, six to seven breaths per minute. It was established that during his stabilization meditation, there was a decrease in metabolism of 64% from rest. Never before had such a decrease been documented. Decreases in metabolism during sleep have been seen in the range of 10 to 15%. In simple meditation, around 17%. 64% is truly remarkable. The first reports of Tumo came to the West at the beginning of the 20th century by way of Alexander David Neal in her book Magic and Mystery in Tibet. After nearly four years of studying Tumo in the 1980s, the Harvard team finally came upon its opportunity to witness the proceedings that so captivated David Neal. Room temperature at the beginning of the ceremony was 40 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The water temperature was 49 degrees Fahrenheit, and the sheets measured approximately 3 by 6 feet. Most people exposed to these conditions would almost immediately go into uncontrolled shivering, their bodies desperately trying to generate heat. Yet shivering would not be enough, and body temperatures would continue to drop. Under certain circumstances, death could result. Yet the monks, through their Tumo practice, were not only able to maintain body temperature, they somehow increased it. And soon it was apparent what they were capable of doing. Alexander David Neal never reported seeing steam. From a scientific point of view, Tumo is a truly remarkable mind-body interaction, where a spiritually based event generates a heat that is only now just beginning to be understood. From a spiritual point of view, His Holiness the Dalai Lama sees things in a slightly different light. Now once you um, develop the, uh, the suscessive power to control inner element, then it can control external element four elements. So now, then, you see, through that way, you could, if you, see, you have you see, good training, then you could you see, perform these, how to say, you may call it a miracle. <laughs>